welcome back to the channel. So, I've had the Durango for about a week now, and I just wanted to let you guys know how it's been. Um, I actually already made this video, but I'm making another one, and scrapped the last one because I realized I recorded it straight up and down instead of sideways, and YouTube doesn't like that. So, yeah, anyway. Um, the 4.7 has been great. Uh, it runs like a top. It did throw a check engine code for an evap leak. Uh, it's a cracked hose uh, somewhere along the charcoal canister line. And the only thing it really affects is before the Durango is warmed up in the morning uh, when I'm like on my way to work. light, specifically the first red light I slow down to every time, um, it shuts off. Um, it starts right back up and keep going. Um, and I know it's the EVAP leak and nothing else because it's it's not running correctly um, when it's still cold. So, otherwise it's been great. Um, now, if you don't know, uh, it is a body on frame construction. It's not a unibody like the Jeep was. It has been a great platform. Um, I had an Explorer that was uh, body on frame as well. Uh, and the Durango is independent front suspension and leaf under axle rear. Uh, like I explained in the first video about it. Uh, the Explorer I had was also leaf under rear. Um, or leaf under axle rear and independent front suspension. Uh, it handles fantastic. It does 120 miles an hour, um, pretty much without having to ask, and it, it's a phenomenal rig for traveling and for carrying my family around. As you can see, it has three rows of seating, um, which actually came in handy the other day. I was actually really, really happy that I had it because I actually needed it the other day. Durango went on its first rescue mission. Um, all of my friends decided to go float down the river, and it got real late and dark, and uh, they kind of got lost. Uh, they lost their sense of direction, basically. Um, they they kind of lost their bearings with where they were. Um, the, the dangerous part about that wasn't that you know, they might have hit something or whatever, that um, they would have kept floating past where they were supposed to get off, and they probably wouldn't have realized it. Um, so, they ended up jumping off on a riverbank, um, they had a bunch of tubes and rafts and stuff, and they ended up having to climb a riverbank, um, walk through some real thick brush uh, in, in the woods, and over train tracks and then up another bank um, to where I was waiting for them. Um, and there was actually seven of them and I managed to get everyone in the Durango comfortably. Um, and their tubes and rafts, I got them all inflated and had them uh, holding them on their laps and I had one strapped to the roof and whatever. Um, so, it's a great utilitarian vehicle. Um, it's still stock height and I'm not sure if I'm gonna lift it real, real high yet. No, I might just lift it about two inches and uh, go with 32s, uh, maybe 33s, I'm not sure. Um, I'm still looking around, doing research and whatnot, um, but everything has been holding up fantastic with it. It gets shit gas mileage, I'm going to be honest. It's not as good as the Jeep, but loaded down with me and all my gear. Uh, it's 5,000 pounds, and the Jeep was 4,600 loaded down with me and all my gear. So it's another 400 pounds, um, and that's mainly because of the third row of seating. Um, and I've considered taking them out, but I'm just not sure yet. Um, and the reason it's getting shitty gas mileage is because it's not seeing the highway. It's seeing all back roads. Um, my route to work is nothing but back roads. Um, and if you really jump on it around a turn, it'll it'll light up the tires a little bit. Um, I 
haven't been feeding on it, I just kind of have been testing it and seeing what it's capable of. I still have to get the front drive shaft in. Uh, it's a brand new drive shaft uh, and a brand new carrier bearing as far as I know. Um, so the previous owner told me he gave me a whole bunch of booklets and whatnot of all the previous maintenance. So um, in that sense it's been great. Durango doesn't mind the heat. Uh, it's currently 97 degrees outside where I live. Uh, I don't know what that is in Celsius for the Canadians. I'm sorry, um, but it's you know it's been fantastic. Um, it doesn't overheat. Um, it's ma been maintaining all its fluids, no problem. Um, it's it's a really good rig. Um, and if you want to buy one for your kid or uh, you know a starter vehicle. Um, other than the gas mileage, they're they're great, um, and they it moves pretty good when you really step on it, um, which is what you should expect from a 5,000 pound SUV. Uh, you shouldn't expect it to haul ass unless it's you know the newer Durango with the Hellcat motor. If that's even been a thing yet, I'm not sure. I don't remember, but I know the Jeep had a 707 horsepower motor in it, and the brand new Grand Cherokee. Yeah, so you really can't complain, um, especially for what I paid for it. It's it was cheap, um, and I did look it over. I crawled underneath it and checked everything. It's got new brake lines. And, um, it it needs different rotors um, and different brake pads because the previous owner put a really cheap set on, and it blows a lot of brake dust. Uh, all over the wheels. I just cleaned them the other day and they're pretty much black already, just about. Um, the wheels are getting painted black, 100% for sure. So, uh, now, this isn't a wheeling rig. Um, it will not wheel as good as a solid axle wheel, um, especially because it's a little bit longer. Um, but it, it's still capable for what I want to do, which is overlanding. Um, you know, Camping trips, uh, you know, mild dirt roads, whatever. Um, I learned that with me having a solid axle when I did, um, I always wanted to go out and break it. I always wanted to go out and beat on it because I knew it was capable off road. Um, so, this vehicle has given me an incentive to grow up a little bit, I guess. Um, I've gotten a lot of flack about buying a Durango because everyone thinks they're super unreliable. As far as I can tell, it's reliable. Um, I would drive it across the country, no problem. I wouldn't care. Uh, other than the EVAP leak, it's, it runs fantastic. Um, and I have no fear of it breaking down randomly. Um, especially because I had great luck with my last 4.7 uh, in the Jeep. That, that motor ran fantastic. And it didn't ask me any questions, no matter how bad I beat on it. Um, but I've been real gentle with the Durango. I haven't been beating on it at all. Um, and it, I like Dodges a little bit more than Jeep. I know, you know, essentially they're sort of kind of the same thing, um, you know, because they're both under Chrysler uh, in the older generations, such as the Durango. Um, basically, I like Dodges more because you, you get get a better feeling out of it, I guess, um, for daily driving. Um, it's, it feels better to drive, but the biggest thing is that it's easier, it's easier on the eyes for me personally. Um, the Durango has sex appeal. Um, I love the way it looks. It is just beautiful. Sorry about all the random noise. I live in a very busy industrial town. But anyway, um, yeah, it's it's been fantastic, right? So
but anyway, so if you guys, you know, consider buying a Durango, uh, the same style as I have, it's, it's not a bad, it's not a bad investment, it's not a bad purchase, I, I got wine cheap, like really, really cheap, and it was 100% worth it in my eyes, I would buy another one, honestly, um, but right now I'm actually looking for a Dakota, with the same front end, um, I believe, pretty sure they're 90, 90, I want to say 98 to 04, I'm pretty sure that's what they are, um, they're also beef under axle rear, an independent front suspension, um, but I want one that's two-wheel drive so I can slam it on the ground and have a, uh, a mini truck, um, because a buddy of mine is also building a mini truck um, with a Jeep Comanche, so that's the, uh, you know, that's, that's the sum, sum of everything with this. Um, consider buying a Durango if you want to buy something cheap and fun um, that you're just going to daily and, uh, you know, do a little bit of family camping with. Um, there's miles of space back here, and you can fold both third and second row down and have the full sleeping platform, basically, um, and still have room for all your gear. Um, with the third row up, the trunk is very tight, but if you know how to organize, you can stack it and get it, you know, pushed into where you need it. So, that's pretty much going to be it. Um, thank you guys for watching like and subscribe and stay tuned for upgrades and mods to Clifford the Big Red Durango. Have a good one. I'll see y'all later.